Jesus, I appreciated that song. That was a beautiful song. And uh, I like the spirit of the song. Um, Jesus certainly is standing by our side. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. <laughs> He's uh, should be the light of our life. There's a, another phrase in a, in a song we sang. Um, talks about he's the joy of heaven. I've always liked that phrase. <laughs> he's the joy of heaven. Uh, what's the rest of that phrase? Uh, you know, that, that phrase has always stood out to me and that I can't think of the name of the song. But he's the joy of heaven. He's also the joy of the earth. <laughs> he's our joy. And he came to bring us a message from heaven. Uh, Jesus was an ambassador from another world. Uh, there was a world in existence before this world was in existence. The Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens were in existence before the earth. And uh, Jesus uh, was with God. In fact, in the first, uh, first part of Genesis, you're reading a conversation between Jesus and God. And uh, so there was another world that existed. They, uh, of course, there's a lot we don't know about that world. Uh, a lot of things about that world that I don't suppose he could tell us. Not that he wouldn't like to, but there is nothing uh, in our experience in life that would allow us to even understand what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, there's another dimension. Scientists talk about another dimension. Uh, it's, these things have been they've fascinated me because here... You can go down to the bookstore and you can buy a science fiction story about, about people that have suddenly found some kind of a secret and, and uh, drank some magic por potion and, and uh, suddenly become invisible. <laughs> Moved into some other dimension of some kind. As if that's some new scientific... Uh, uh, idea uh, that somebody has suddenly thought of. Why well, we read that back there thousands of years ago. <laughs> this world was visited by uh, beings from another world. Um, uh, the prophet uh, was talking, or was it, to his servant and uh, asked the uh, uh, the Lord opened his servant's eyes. He was in a battle. And here this servant, uh, his eyes suddenly become open. And he looked around the hills. And the hills were full. There were just angels everywhere. There was a, an, an invisible army that surrounded them in another dimension. That world, uh, thousands of beings... I don't know how many beings are over there. I've heard all kinds of figures, millions and billions, and, and I don't know if we're given the figure, but it's not a small number of beings in that other world, that other realm. And uh, here God created man, put him here on the earth, and uh, Adam walked and talked with the Lord. He had a, he had a contact with that other world. There was a, uh, Adam was, a, was uh, aware of it, knew about it. How much he knew, I don't know. But uh, he knew about it because he had a contact with God. And he walked with the Lord. And uh, no doubt uh, a lot of the, uh, Adam's life surrounded uh, 
the Lord and that other, other realm, that other world. But that contact was broken. It says Adam fell. That, that word's always fascinated me. He fell. He fell from that realm down to another level. Uh, it talks about the serpent in eating dust. Uh, that that's what he'd live on. Uh, here, Adam uh, had a connection with, with God that he had life. He had life that was given to him and provided to him that was not dependent on his connection with this world, this earth. Adam lived by his connection with the Lord and not by his connection with the world. You and I live by our connection with the world. <laughs> We go out in the garden or go down to the store and buy some food, and that's what we live on. Our connection, our life, is uh, dependent on how we're connected with this world. Adams had another connection. He had, he, he had a connection with heaven. <clears throat> but he fell. When he fell, he lost that connection. And then he uh, had to live his life was dependent on this on the earth and he fell to the to the uh, realm or to the plane of just nature just the natural elements of this world and you can uh, uh, read science about nature uh, and I don't know, most all the children have probably studied the food chain. You know what the food, you know what that term is. Talking about the food chain, the the uh, plankton grow in the ocean, and then uh, some little shrimp or little organism, a little bigger than that plankton, will eat the plankton, and uh, then another little bigger fish, he'll eat the shrimp. And then uh, another fish just a little bigger than him, he'll eat him. And on it goes, on it goes up and up, and finally you've got a shark or a whale, then he's the end of the chain. And you may have a dozen or two steps. <laughs> that whale is really eating plankton. He's, he's getting about tenth hand, <laughs> but he's living on plankton. That's what's called the food chain. And here the, uh, the uh, deer, it eats the grass and the leaves. And then the lion, he lives on the deer. But the lion's really living on grass. He gets it through the deer. <laughs> it's the food chain that is, uh, that is in existence through nature. So the nature then is... Uh, is on a, is in a uh, on a plane of of uh, death. Death reigns over nature because they eat each other. <laughs> they live by living off of each other. Here, here, nature uh, exists off of each other. And ring any bell with you? Ever see people living off of other people? <laughs> there's a there's a see, man fell. He fell to that level. That was the level Adam landed on. That was when he fell. That's where he landed. He landed on that level of nature, and he come become part of it. And uh, he just was walking down there. The next day, Adam walking through the, the forest, he was, he, he, if he wasn't careful, he'd become part of the food chain. <laughs> he just was part of that, that level of nature. And uh, 
Here was another world then apart from that, that God lived. Here God lived in one realm. Then in Adam, then he fell and began to live on another plane, another realm. And then in time, it said in, in due time, uh, there was a time for Jesus to come. When Jesus came, he came with a message from that other world. He came with a message from his Father. And he came to redeem mankind from the level of nature back to God's level. And that, that uh, process, or that that we're to see, is, uh, is a calling. God is calling man to another level, to a higher plane. He's to call us off of this level of nature. And he's beckoning in us to come up on a higher level, on a higher plane. Instead of taking on nature, the natural spirit, we're to take on a divine nature. You ever notice that term? We know what nature is, don't we? The Bible talks about a divine nature. And uh, we're, to, we're to throw off this nature, a human nature, and take on a divine nature. And it's interesting how opposites these two things are. They're, they're just... I want you to look, at, uh, look with me. Turn to 2 Peter. In the first chapter. Begin with the second verse. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. See, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, by coming to a knowledge of God and of Jesus. We, well, that's how we become aware of the divine nature. According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Yeah. We're to, we're to escape this plane, this level. We're to escape the human nature level. Or the level of nature, the natural level that we see here on earth. We're to escape from that and take on a divine nature. And uh, then in the fifth verse, uh, he, he begins to talk about some of these things in the divine nature. Besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and patience, godliness. And there's a counter, there's, a, there's, a, there's an opposite to all these things. What's the opposite of faith? It's doubt, isn't it? And what's the world full of? The world's full of doubt. Skepticism, criticism. See the two natures? Virtue. Uh, virtue is uh, an unimpaired singleness of heart in simplicity to always do the right thing. Does that sound like the world? See, it's just the opposite of the world, isn't it? Always do the right thing. Well, you're an oddball. 
If that's your, if that's your zeal in this world, you're out here in the world and, and your, your main goal in life is just to always do the right thing. You're, you're going you're gonna to stick out. You're going to be different, aren't you? The virtue of knowledge. Of course, the opposite of that is ignorance. Knowledge temperance. Temperance is self-control. It's not hard for us to see the opposite of that in the world, is it? <laughs> That's, the, in fact, uh, do your own thing. Is, is the message of this generation in it. Isn't that the message we've heard in our time? And uh, that's just the opposite of temperance. And temperance, patience. Patience, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness, charity. And he's, uh, we can find an opposite to all these things. To where that God is calling for us then to... Look at Je First of all, we're to look at Jesus. Because he's the one that brought the message to us. And, I, and that um, 17th chapter of John that she was reading. Uh, and that last two verses. It said, O, o righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. See, the world... The world doesn't know God. They just, they, they don't know God. Uh, a lot of people don't believe there is such a thing as a God. <laughs> How can they know him? They don't even believe him. Well, that's why Jesus came, see? Jesus came to tell the world that there was a God. There was, there was another, there was another something else for us to strive for in this life. Uh, God had something else in man for mankind. The world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name. Now that word name carries with it the idea of nature. I have declared thy nature. So that Jesus came, walked the earth... And uh, remember, uh, one of the disciples, was it Philip, uh, that asked Jesus one time, he said, uh, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. And he said, uh, have I been so long with you, and you have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Okay. That's what he's saying here. He said, I have declared unto them thy name. I have, I have shown the world what God is like. I have, I have put on display and have walked for those 33 and a half years on the earth that the world might look at, at, at Jesus then and know what God's like. Or we can get a glimpse into that other world. We can see the contrast. We can see, what, we can see what divine nature is. The Bible calls for us to take on divine nature, doesn't it? All right, what, is, what is it? What is divine nature? What is this that he's asking us to take on and put on? What is it, Lord, that you're asking of us? We're to look at Jesus. And uh, by examining what he said, and, and over and over again, in, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, in uh, Matthew 5, and uh, verse 38, you have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, <laughs> he's declaring something else. He's saying this, this now is what the divine nature would be saying. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. My, what a contrast. <laughs> no wonder at the end, I believe it's the end of that, isn't it, that they said they were astonished at his doctrine. 
They were astonished at this. Why? Because he was declaring uh, God's name in the earth. He was proclaiming the name of the Lord in the earth. And he was displaying and showing mankind what the divine nature was. And how men uh, could uh, be lifted uh, from the level that they were on up into that higher plane of the divine family. The heavenly, there's a heavenly family. There's thousands of people. There's millions of people in that other world. You know that? Millions of people over there. I say people. Beings be a better term. <laughs> millions of beings. And uh, uh, God is going to have men and women that we know and have lived on the earth that are going to live with him in that, re in that realm. They're going to take on that divine nature and move in to that other realm. That divine and heavenly realm that God has had. It's been there for centuries. It was here before the world was. And here he's inviting us up. He's saying, come on. I give you an opportunity to move up here with me. Somebody said one time, said that Enoch walked with God and uh, what was the phrase says uh, it was not for God took him I heard one somebody say so on, one time I like the phrase he said one day Enoch and God went out for a walk and said they well, went a little too far that day and God looked in, looked over Enoch and said Enoch said, you know I think we're closer to my house than we are yours he said, why don't you just come home with me <laughs> that's what's going to happen one of these days <laughs> God is going to invite us up to his, to his abode in that realm, on that plane, that heavenly divine plane that God lives in. The angels live in that realm. Jesus lives in that realm. And he came down here and showed us how to live that. And he's walking with us. And he gave us, uh, to, to make it perhaps more relative to what I'm talking about, uh, was that in the 14th chapter of uh, John where it talks about uh, I in them and they in me verses it is it in John 14 14.20 At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. You see, Jesus, uh, that's why I like that song Sister Sandy was, was singing. He's by our side. Here, here he walked, here he came down and showed us what it was about. Showed us that other side. Showed us that other realm. And showed the spirit that, was, that came from that heavenly world. The kindness, the love, the gentleness. The uh, how uh, incon uh, I don't know what it's, considerate those people are. How considerate Jesus was. How broad was his thinking. He hung on the cross. And he looked down on those people. And he looked through all that he was feeling himself. He looked through the, uh, uh, the, the nature in himself that was suffering. You know, this body, and we can go through trials, and it'll just fog our vision. That's all we can see. You can suffer and go under a trial and a test, and it just clouds your mind. You can't see through that. The, this, this, this nature, this natural realm down here will just cause so much smoke uh, and, and, and uh, around us that we can't see through that. But here Jesus in all that suffering looked right through his natural feelings and desires, looked out on that crowd and he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
What consider? What a? Can you see the broadness of his thinking? See, see the the magnitude of, of his feeling for mankind. The le- look at the level he was on. Look at that plateau that he was on. And his mind was on another level. Here his body was suffering, but it didn't cloud his mind, didn't cloud his vision. He, 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 he uh, stayed on that other level, that other plane, and was able to look out there and have a clear, sharp vision of mankind, still felt for mankind, still had that heartbeat of God coming out of him for mankind in the midst of all of his suffering. So that uh, uh, then uh, another way the Bible talks about this then is in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians when it talks about love. And uh, there he, he, uh, well, let's just look at it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit of me nothing. Now here it is, charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's talking another language. He's talking about the divine nature that we are to take on. Started to say here, Jesus uh, uh, not only came down and walked that way with, uh, for us to show us the example, and he was a forerunner for us. He's the captain of our salvation, and uh, he went before us. Not only did he do that. But after he completed it, he came back here uh, by virtue of the Holy Ghost and lives in our hearts and will walk with us. He'll walk with us every day now, teaching us how to do what he did. He'll walk with us every day. He'll whisper in our ear. He'll deal with us and show us how to take on that divine nature. How to throw off uh, these things that have troubled us. And uh, it's not something necessarily that we have taken on. We're born with it. We're born with this other nature. We're born with that. That we're children of this other nature. Jesus walking by our side. Then is... uh, Uh, there to assist us and help us. And uh, that phrase in that song uh, said the times they felt the weight of the cross on on our shoulders. You ever feel the weight of the cross? You know what the cross is? (laughs) Another way. Uh, See what I'm saying? There's another way of explaining what we're talking about. The two natures is to bear our cross every day and to feel that weight, but to have him help lift that weight, to lift that cross, for us to to give us assistance to carry that cross. And then for him to beckon us. He's, he's, He's beckoning us to move out of this realm, move off of this plane, and come up higher to something else. How many times have we heard those words in the last three or four months? To come up higher. <laughs> to come on another level. Get on another level. And I, I, uh, 
I love to feel the Holy Ghost. I, I love to come in in the services and feel the moving of the Holy Ghost and, and just be saturated with the Holy Spirit. That, that, that's, a, that's another level and a plane that we, uh, we enjoy and the Lord provides for us and gives us. But you know, he's asking us to move up on another level in another way. He's asking us to live on another level. He's asking us to take a hold of some of these things that are simple. You know, those are sense of simple principles. To just be kind and be good. <laughs> How many times you told your children, just be good. You didn't explain everything to them, did you? <laughs> Share with Billy and <laughs> put up your toys and, <laughs> and don't talk back. And, and you just said, why don't you just be good? <laughs> That's what God is wanting us. That other, that other realm for us to begin to uh, integrate into our lives these, these principles of the divine nature to where that they are predominant in our nature. Then that becomes our nature. <laughs> we by nature would become kind and gentle and good people. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what can the world say against that? Everybody wants to be good people. God is asking us to move up on another level. When we get up in the morning, walk through the day, that our, that our minds would begin to be on another level. We try to make contact with that other world, <laughs> that other realm. Begin to integrate that into our life. Begin to take on the attributes of God himself. Is that saying too much? Might offend in some realms to say that. But that, that divine nature is what he's requiring us to take on and put into our lives. There's just been a yearning in me lately. I, I, I know I, I, I learn, yearn to have uh, services that are high in the spirit. But there's just been a deeper yearning in my soul that I want to move up higher, higher than that realm. I, you know, we can, we can actually expend the spirit in emotion. You, you can use up the spirit of God in just emotion and just go home just like you came. You know, that's possible. That the Spirit of the Lord move in our midst and our services and, and uh, we'll uh, have the time of our life for an hour or two and really not take much of it home with us. <laughs> but God is wanting us to move up and have days in the Spirit. <laughs> have a Monday in the Spirit. <laughs> Instead of having a gloomy day, Thank God I had a Monday in the Spirit. I walked in the Spirit today. <laughs> I felt the Lord talking to my heart and walking with me today. And I was able then to show the world. Then, then I, there's one other scripture. Uh, I believe that's in the 17th chapter of John again. The 18th verse, that thou hast sent me into the world. And you see, God sent Jesus in the world to declare the name of the Lord. The purpose, one of the purposes, that for which Jesus came was to declare the name of the Lord to the world. Now with that in mind, look at that other verse. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. <laughs> See, the world, the world doesn't know God. Uh, so Jesus came that they might know God. The world now doesn't know God. So we're to go to the world. We're to go to the world that the world might know God. What, how? How? by a visual example. 
that they might look at our life. That's what he's saying. Isn't that what he's saying? Just as we could look at Jesus' life back there and be convinced that there was a God, there was a, there was a divine nature, there was another realm in which we could attain to, the world is to be able to look at somebody else besides just Jesus and be convinced that there's a, there's a God. There's a divine nature. There's another realm that they can attain to. And he said, as I have sent, as, as the Father has sent me into the world, even so send I you. Jesus turned around now and looked at those around him and he, and he said, just like the Father sent me to you, I'm going to send you now to the world. And there's to be men and women in this last day that show this world once again, that demonstrate, that uh, put on display the divine nature in this world and show the world it can be done. It can be done. By the help of the Holy Ghost, it can be done. What a peace in my, our minds. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. There's a, there's, a, there's a peace that is offered to us in this endeavor that the world doesn't know anything about. <laughs> the world doesn't know anything about. They, they, there's, 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 they've never encountered. You know that? They have never encountered what we feel at times. <laughs> feel that peace in our hearts? Uh, in this endeavor we're in, they've never felt that. That wonderful peace of God in our hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah.